used to do water droplets on a can using particle systems. However, since geometry nodes, we can have a lot more control over our particles and it's a lot faster too. So we're going to learn a very simple geometry node setup for droplets on the can. If you're this far in the free masterclass, consider subscribing. So without further ado, let's get started. So we've got our scene set up, we've got our cans, we've got our textures, we've got our lighting. We are going to open a new tab right over here and I'm going to set it to Geometry Node Editor. Very cool, press N to remove that. And now I'm going to zoom in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press on New. And right here we get our group input. Let me make this smaller so you can actually see what's going on. I'm going to remove this so that we only have our can right here and our Geometry Node setup. I'm going to distribute points on faces and on those faces I will distribute another texture or material or object actually which is going to be an icosphere. So I'm going to mesh icosphere. All right, so it's right over here, our icosphere. And I'm going to pull this up and give it a new material. You can remove the UV editor, by the way, no need to keep that around. And I'm going into the transmission, increase the weight of the transmission. And now it will already be a little bit transparent. It looks uh, kind of hazy. Uh, so we're going to decrease the roughness to something around uh, 0.150. And this makes sure that we've got a water droplet. Very cool. And now we're going into our can and we can drag our icosphere right here. We're going to need it later. First thing I'm going to add, Shift A, Join Geometry, because I want to keep my can. And that's why I added Join Geometry, because as soon as we add other nodes to it, it will remove the can, but only use its structure. We don't want that, we want to keep the can, so I'm going to use the Join Geometry to make that happen. And now I'm going to add a Distribute Points on Faces. And now, as you can see, we get all these points on the face. And this is why we added a Join Geometry node, because we can now take the geometry and plug it right in here. And as you can see, we've got our can and our points on the faces. Now on these points, instance on points, we want to have our icosphere. Geometry, instance, and whoa, what's going on? Well, it's way too big and that's a problem, but it's solvable. So we're going to do that by adding a random value and plugging that random value into the scale. Now it doesn't solve our problem just yet because we need to add a map range node place it right in here and now we can decide the range in between the sizes of our icosphere. So we are going to decrease the two max because the max value is way too high. That's why it's making our icospheres way too big. So I'm going to decrease that like so. <laughs> and as you can see, we already have some randomized drops in size. So some of them are different sizes than others. And we can play around with these values in order to make it look good. So 0 0.03. Uh, the from max, I'm just going to leave it to one. And as you can see, we've got a couple of cool droplets on this can. Now, what if we want to change the amount of droplets? No problem, we can do that. I'm going to take the group input and put it into the density. Now, why did I do that? Because now we can go over to our modifiers and under the geometry nodes section, we have a value that we can change, namely the density. So if I were to change this to 50, we would get a whole lot more drops. And all of these drops are different in size because of our geometry node setup, which is very nice. So we just can change it around now the way we want it to. I'm going to set it to uh, 20. I think it looks pretty good. There's quite a couple of, uh, of drops now, and this increases the value of the render even more. Now I'm going to increase the size of this and see whether this is enough. And I actually believe it is enough. We want those drops on the other cans as well. So what can we do? We can go over to preferences, and then we have the copy attributes menu, and you should have this enabled. Then you click on this can, click on that can, click on this can, then search for the copy modifiers and there you have it we have some drops on those as well not really visible because they're in the background right now but later on as we'll start animating these you want to have them on it so and that's it for the geometry node part of this tutorial i hope you enjoyed it this is a new workflow usually we used to do some particle systems etc but now we can just use a modifier uh, namely the geometry node one and 
change around our stuff. Very cool. And uh, play around with it, see what you can do with it. It's a very simple setup. All right, so I'll see you in the next part where we are going to start with the animations. But first, I'm going to visualize what the animations look like in the graph editor because this is the most important part. You can just follow along and drag some of these sliders and make sure that the animation looks right. Or you can actually understand how the graph editor works and what these lines actually represent. And then you'll be able to fish forever, so to speak. So the next video is the most important lesson about animation. And since we're going to animate the scan a lot, make sure to watch it and don't skip it, because this lesson will increase your understanding by a tenfold. Plus it will help you throughout the entire rest of the course. So click here to watch that video.